attorney Kenneth J. Landau. Hi, this is Ken Landau, and welcome back to Law You Should Know. We're talking about student loan forgiveness. Very important if you're a student, graduate, or you know someone who will be or who is. We're talking with John DiGregorio, and he's with the National Student Loan Service Center. They're not a government agency, but they help people to minimize uh, their obligations on student loans and maximize uh, opportunities for forgiveness. And John is sharing his knowledge with us and is a lot more information at his at their, his company's website. John, you were just talking about the public uh, forgiveness. Is that apply to the private loans or just federal loans? Now, these would just be federal loans. Unfortunately, private loans do not come with any type of forgiveness program. The only thing you can do with a private loan is do a refinance on it, hopefully, uh, obviously, with a lower interest rate. Uh, I do notice some of the Sally Mae loans, which are all private loans, come with an interest rate north of 10%, which I believe is uh, way too high in this day and age. So Sally Mae, even if it sounds like a government agency, is are private loans? That is correct. Okay. And now let's talk about public forgiveness. Someone's working in private industry, in private practice, a private hospital, a private medical practice. How can they take advantage of uh, general forgiveness? So, so if you work in the in the private sector, the the term of the loan obviously will most likely be more than ten years, but it will never be higher than the term that you were currently put in. So, for instance, typically any loan that's north of let's say seventy five thousand dollars. That's automatically going to go into a 30-year standard repayment plan. Uh, Once you decide to go into an income-driven repayment plan, you would go from the 30 years to a 25 years, and a 25 year to a 20 year, depending on the situation. And under the income driven, you can never end up paying more than you would the other way around. Okay. So if, if your income starts to catapult higher, okay, it, it would be rare that you would be paying more than you would have previously. However, if that were to be the case, the term of your loan would also come down as well. So yes, your payments could go up, but the term of your loan would go down. And how would that help you? It would help you save, obviously, the cost of the accruing interest, which is staggering if you really look at the structure of your loan. And can people freeze a loan and just, let's say they're unemployed or they have other important medical expenses or they lose? Well, if, if someone is unemployed, okay, at that point, they are eligible for a, a zero payment, which counts as a payment, but this is something that needs to uh, be addressed. The, uh, the servicer needs to be informed of this. There has to be documentation attesting to the fact that an individual is currently not working and even and they would qualify for a zero payment and a zero ca- payment does count towards a payment and so it counts toward forgiveness but it, and it's driving down your balance as well it, it's not driving down your balance but it is uh deducting from the term of your loan okay and you don't have to make that up at any point the the mispayment no, no. as long as you, you do document not have to make this it. up as right. long as you stay in communication uh, there will never be a, an issue. And for how long can that go on? As long as you are unemployed. So if you're un- if you're unemployed for a very long time, your loan will still be. You will not be required to make a payment. Will your loan be forgiven after twenty five or thirty years? Theoretically, if that were the case, it could possibly happen. Is it likely? No, but is it possible? Yes. And if you didn't do it on day one, can you go into these programs later on? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Many of our uh, clients uh, did not hear about these programs until later on. And even though they had already started to make uh, payments, the option of doing an income-driven repayment plan is still way, uh, it's still a much better solution than sticking around in the repayment plan that they originally were put into. Because that's not necessarily going to be their most favorable. It's just that they're put into it by default. No, nothing is. Uh, no, no one ch- 
chooses their repayment plan, it's automatically assumed that it's going to be a standard repayment plan. Uh, you need to... Uh, there needs to be some legwork done in order to be put into an income-driven repayment plan. And you help uh, students do that? Yes. Uh, basically, what our company does is we uh, we educate the client in terms of what they are already in because we find that most clients do not even realize what their loan is all about. They do not understand it. They do not know the term of their loan. Some people don't even know whether it's a private or federal loan. So we are going to explain that right off the bat and explain how income driven can be better. Once once we do that, we sit down with the client and we consult uh, with them uh, and we will go over their repayment options to see if it makes sense for them to move forward with this. Okay, and in most cases it would make sense? I would say 95% of the time. And it's very important that people not ignore student loans. It's not going to go away. It's not going away. It's a problem. The student loan debt at $15 trillion is the biggest debt in the United States of America. It's, it's a problem that... Uh, Unfortunately, even with these income-driven repayment plans, it still seems that we're taking on water. Uh, but at least when people realize their options and know and understand them, this is m- a much better affordable solution for them. And supposedly some employers will also kick in every year you're with them to reduce your student loans. Yeah, th- th- lately there's been employers who definitely want to help out. They have been actually reaching out to us uh, to explain these programs to their employees because they see that student loan debt is by far a very big uh, problem uh, for everyone. And it doesn't cost anyone uh, money to explore their options with you or one of your colleagues. Correct. I mean, the the education is the education on the one and the one on one consultation is completely free of charge. At which point, if a client would like us to move forward and do all the legwork for them to get this goal accomplished, we will absolutely do that. There will be a fee attached to it. Okay, and is that based on that? The work, or it's based yes, on the money Yes, it's based saved. on the work. Uh, like I said, uh, some individuals, most of them do need a consolidation to start off with. Uh, they will all need to do a change of repayment. So that's where the fee would come in for processing. Um, and then, like I said, once a year, these programs need to be recertified. Uh, there would be another separate fee for that as well. And it's important that students, or they may be graduates, hopefully gainfully employed, be aware of their options. Yes, I I believe that when someone is educated and and they understand what they're involved with, they can make a a, a sound decision. Uh, Sometimes these programs sound a little bit too good to be true. Uh, and but, but they are <laughs> they are they are what they are. Uh, there's there's no uh, arguing there. Um, th- and, and give us your website where students, parents, uh, you know, guidance counselors can find out more information. Sure, I, we can be our our website is the abbreviations of our company, which is N S L S C, and we're at dot C O, not a C O M. So it's. Uh, nslsc.co National Student Loan Service Center is our name. And people would find out information about all these programs, all these options. Correct. So in regards to, and if there are people out there who need to know certain things prior to taking out their loans, we would then offer our expertise and try to guide them the best way as possible. And there's essentially no charge for that? There is no charge whatsoever. And what are some other ways that you and your company can be reached? Uh, I could also be reached on my phone, which is 888-384-0877. My extension is 114. Okay. And just give us the website one more time. Sure. It's NSLSC dot co okay in terms of collectors are there bill collectors or private uh, firms that 
manage these loans for the the government or a yes, lender that they were to aggressively collect them? Yes. Uh, Sally May used to handle all federal student loans, and then they distributed these loans to several different lenders out there, uh, Navient, Great Lakes, Mohila, Fed Loan, and there's a few more. Uh, these are your servicers. These are the people who you will be paying your monthly bill to. Uh, for those who, uh, unfortunately, and there's many out there who are in default, your loans will be removed from those lenders to a collection agency, and the government is very serious about uh, getting their money back, and they will garnish your wages, and they will actually take your tax returns if you do go into default. So even if they're in one of the programs you've mentioned, they do have to make that payment or show their, they've lost their income. Right. You, you need to make the qualifying payment. It's not to say that you lose your forbearance time you can still go into forbearance if you go back to school that's fine too uh they would put you into deferment and then we would have a conversation whether or not deferment is your best option maybe staying in repayment would be your best option but that's something we need to discuss and and interest is still being charged while it's in forbearance that is correct the interest the interest meter will always continuously go on there's no stopping that okay so i'm gonna have john give us contact information one more time on his website you have any questions please contact them sure it's once again it's nslsc.co which is our website and i could be reached at 888-384-0877 extension 114 And if you missed any portion of this program or you want to let someone else know about it, a a free podcast can be found by searching WHPC on iTunes or at Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R dot com. Please join us next week at this at the same time for another program of Law You Should Know.